Hi, welcome back to BusyBots. Thanks for stopping by. Today we'll talk about software for your RepRap 3D printer, uh, particularly for Macintosh uh, on OS X. Now, most of what I'll show you is also available for Windows and Linux, but uh, I wanted to make, make it clear that you're not being left out if you're on a Mac. You can definitely do your 3D printing on a Mac. There's lots of good software available. Uh, much of it is open source. Much of it is free, although I encourage you to donate and pay for the uh, upgrades if you use the software regularly. So let's get started. I'll show you the software in the order. You'll probably use it if you're building your printer from scratch. Uh, once you have your machine uh, physically assembled, you'll probably have to upload some firmware. And to do that, if you have, uh, for example, if you're using a ramps board, uh, which is a shield for the Arduino, uh, you'll use the Arduino IDE, and that's this piece of software right here. You would load your firmware in. Um, I use Marlin on my Mendel Max, and the uh, Arduino IDE lets you modify the, the code for your firmware, save it, and then upload it to the, uh, to the board, and you'll, you'll use this. So this may be the first piece of software you have to use, once you uh, once you build your printer once you have the firmware installed next you have to test your movements and uh, and start setting up your end stops and so forth and for that you'll use Pronter face which is also called printer interface that's this package right here now the example I'll be using today is this iPad stand and uh, the input of all this will be the STL file so here's our iPad iPad stand STL now I have it loaded into, into all the different softwares here, you'll see. So in printer interface, uh, there's a lot going on here. You can do a lot with this with this package. Now when you first have your printer set up, you'll have to connect it to the appropriate USB port at the right speed. And I'll go over this on a different video on printer interface. And it's also useful for moving your um, axes. Um, so here I am connecting. and once you're connected, you can you can move the printer on, on the X, Y, and Z axis, and you can home. So this is useful to set your end stops and get your direction correct in the firmware. Here you'll home just the X axis. Here's to home Y. Here's to home Z. If you press here, you home X, Y, and Z uh, with one button click. And if you just want to jog the X axis, you can come here for negative and positive, and Y and negative and positive for... Uh, 0.1, 1, 10, and 100 millimeters. You can also do similar for Z, positive and negative. In, uh, here you have 0.1 and 1 and 10 millimeters. This is also where you set your temperatures while you're printing. This is what I use for ABS, 226C for the extruder, and this is for the bed. This is manual control for your extruder. If you want to do a color change or uh, feed new, fil new roll of filament, um, if I hit extrude, I would pull in 5 millimeters of filament at 50 millimeters per minute. Now, likewise for the speed controls, this is my XY movements and my Z movement speeds. And this is just for the jog controls. The actual printer speeds are set in slicer, which we'll cover next. Uh, one other thing to point out in printer interface or printer face is you can set some custom buttons here. And you can also use it to preview your G-code. When you load the uh, G-code in, it gives you uh, some good information. It shows you how wide your printer is in X and Y and Z. also gives you a time estimate. shows you how many layers. And you can also click on here, and you can preview each layer of the, uh, of the file as it'll print, which is really handy. It lets you know whether or not um, something went wrong, totally wrong. Um, it's pretty handy. So... It's, it's worth popping in there take a quick look. Now, when you're actually, after you have your end stop set and your temperatures are correct and your printer's working correctly and you want to print your first thing, you have to slice it. And for that, I'm going to show you slicer, and that's spelt with a 3. So it's S-L-I-C-3-R. And uh, let's say I have the iPad in there. Let me remove it. I'll show you the interface. So you come to the Plater tab. And as you see, drag your object here. So you take your STL file, drop it right on there. And uh, once it comes in, you go to these three tabs, printer settings, filament settings, and printer settings. And that's where you set up all your parameters for the print. The layer height, the amount of infill, 
uh, the various speeds and so forth. There's a lot of things and I'll cover those in the slicer video. It's also where you measure your filament and tell slicer how uh, the actual measured measurement of your filament is. You can control the cooling fan and some other aspects of cooling. Also the size of your bed and how to center and also your retraction settings which are very important. And that's how you run slicer. Now I want to show you, uh, let's see, I want to show you another way to, to, to view your um, to view your g-code. So I showed you the uh, the viewer here in printer interface for printer interface, but you can't really zoom in, you can't do very much. Um, but here, if you go to this URL at buildlog.net, you can zoom right in. You hold the S key, and then you can zoom straight in, and you can see every line uh, of movement that your printer is going to do. The white lines are actual print moves and the blue lines are travel moves and we don't have any in this but it, uh, it uses red to show arcs so this is really useful it, to find out if you're going to have a, a problem or not uh, for example this is the slot of the uh, iPad and we would expect to only see uh, travel moves in there and if you move through and you find out you have any infill inside the slot you know there's a problem you can go back and re-slice or maybe look at your STL again or go back to your model and redesign it. Now once you have your STL um, you may at times want to repair them especially if you're downloading from public sites or just view them so NetFab Studio Basic is right here and this is really really nice uh, for just as an STL viewer just to give you a preview of what you have um, to look it over um, it shows you the dimensions and also the volume if you're interested in how much plastic you may be using. And you can also repair your, your STL files from within here. If you only want to use repair, uh, NetFab also has a cloud service where you can upload your STL file using this uh, dialog box. You upload the file, give them your email address, and they'll email you back a link to download the repaired STL. It's very fast, it's very efficient, um, and it works right every time I've used it. I highly recommend it. So those are the six tools that I think you'll need at least to get started for printing on your uh, RepRap from OS X. Uh, you don't actually need the NetFab tools or the G-Code Viewer. Uh, the three that you'll need for sure, uh, unless you buy a pre-configured um, board, is you'll need the Arduino IDE to upload your firmware. You'll need uh, some type of host software such as printer interface or printer face to send your g-code over and to do manual controls to move your printer and you'll need a way to create g-code and that is what slicer will do here so thanks for watching uh, I'll have a new playlist now for the for the software choices and I'll come back and make a video on each one show you where to download it how to install it how to configure it and we'll, in the end we'll make an iPad stand